part of enjoying life is playing games. We've been playing games um, in, in primitive times. We just now have technology to allow us to play kind of more deeper, interesting types of games. But I really just the overall concept is to get rid of the hassles and make them more efficient so that we have more time to do the things that are enjoyable and create that sense of rapture in life that I think we all seek and all desire. It's a higher level of being. The focus of my company is to gain player experience and user experience Intel insights. And what that means is I help create better experiences for humans using technology, whether that's an app, a website, a game, any kind of technology, even a printer or a telephone. So uh, we gain insights by understanding how people interact with technology and how to create that in a way to make it easier to understand and actually more enjoyable. Essentially, we take away all the sense of technology and make it a human experience as much as possible. A lot of adults I've noticed through life start losing that, that essence of joyfulness and fun and delight, and they lose a lot of that. They get bogged down with responsibilities and, um, and things that they need to do and being busy. And they lose a lot of the sense of, of wonder and, and joy and passion that really one of the joys of living are those, those elements. And I really honestly do believe that being able to play a game allows you to be in that world again in a way that you can do it in an efficient way, you can still do all the things you need to do and be responsible, but for that 20 minutes or five minutes or hour even, you have the ability to be in another world and, um, and experience joy and playfulness. For example, um, when I, I first discovered Tony Hawk many years ago, and um, I, never skateboarded at that time and I loved that feeling even with a controller with even with the PlayStation controller which is nothing like what we have with virtual reality now um, I had that feeling of being in the air and being weightless and um, having that visceral experience that I wouldn't have in normal life so that's another element that I just really connected with me personally and and wanted to bring that to other people that excitement and sense of experience that I, I or other people wouldn't have in normal life. But the thing that's interesting is that eventually I actually, because I had that experience, I decided I was going to learn to skateboard. And I actually did that in real life. And I got to the point where I got good enough, um, where I was dropping into pools and doing skate parks and, um, and I did it in real life. And I really believe that having that experience gave me one, the excitement and joy of what it felt like and the inspiration to feel like I could do it in real life as well. Games have also gotten better at teaching. And it's because it's so important to both have a good, enjoy your time and learn at the same time. And when that happens, when you're learning, then it's golden. And that's true in real life, that's true in games. And games have gotten really good and better and better at teaching in a way where you, as a person who's playing, that you don't even feel that you're learning, but you are. And frankly, the secret is, is almost the secret to life and, and being challenged, is that we're always trying to strive for a goal. And when we have a moment-to-moment -moment goal and when we have a long-term goal, it gives us great gratification and motivation, both internally and externally, to continue to reach a new place. And games do that very well, moment-to-moment -moment and overarching. And it gives you that sense of, of learning something so that when you're in real life, you've learned how to basically teach how to learn. It's very clear and obvious because I see when games aren't designed well, what happens. Um, that people end up struggling with the tools to play the game 
the controls and they don't know what to do and they don't feel that sense of mastery. And it makes it can make someone feel really bad about themselves that they tend to blame themselves. People tend to take self-blame for not getting something and understanding something instead of the fact that it's the game design perhaps is not designed in a way to help somebody actually play it well and, and, and to enjoy it. And when I say play it well, what I mean is not necessarily mastering the game, but the key is really having the possibility, feeling they have the possibility of mastering that game. As long as they have that self-efficacy, then they can enjoy the game. But what happens if they don't feel confident they have the possibility of mastering the game, because of barriers within the user interface, within barriers within the pacing of the game, uh, with uh, different elements in the user interface or the, the graphics that don't make sense when the game doesn't seem fair. All those elements get in the way of actually the purity of the game. And really what we do in terms of the human computer interaction is to take away all those barriers. So then you have the purity of the game itself. So that's why it's extremely important um, to have this kind of um, lens and insight onto a game. I think there are a lot of people who are really afraid of what companies are creating in terms of games and they see their kids maybe, you know, playing longer than they want them to and themselves getting into something um, and spending more time than maybe they'd want to. And there's a sense of distrust, I think, with some of the companies and their their desire and uh, to create more of an a, addictive kind of experience. And, you know, to be fair, there probably are some companies that might be doing such a thing, but I know that, you know, when we're talking about the majority of companies that are creating games, they do it people that are doing it are doing it for the love of it. The people who are just like the people who play have the love of playing those games. It's having that incredible experience that you may not have otherwise um, to be able to go to some other land and to experience uh, being a hero uh, for a child, to have that experience, to save, you know, save the world and um, in having this little experience. Um, to feel that sense of mastery, to even feel that sense of mastery in, um, in learning something with the ability of technology they wouldn't otherwise have. Um, so I think there's a matter of trust that the people who are creating these games overall are really trustworthy, wonderful people. Um, again, you know, it's, we're dealing with the human race, so there might be those kinds of people. But for all intents and purposes, for the consumer-based games and for the creative games that are that are built and I know certainly the ones that I work with are the reason is to create more enjoyment more delight more playfulness and it's something that we as humans and as adults um, at least in uh, in the occidental world we spend a lot of time dealing with uh, hassles and and we're busy we're busier than ever and maybe that's the fault of technology too, it's possible. And I've certainly heard that theories and there's some credence to that, certainly. But that's the reality of our world right now. So where can we get a break? Where can we feel that delight and that joy and that passion and to feel a sense of rapture that I think all of us love to feel and have and experience. That's a really human experience. For me, I use technology all the time, so I have to limit it for myself too. I almost liken it to, there's certain things I do for work and it really facilitates my work amazingly. And I really love playing certain games so much, but I limit that amount of time. There's only a certain amount of time. And then I wanna have time just to do other things, be outdoors, for example. Um, talk to, be with my friends, go have a coffee, have dinner with, with people, with, with friends and family. Um, that's such an important thing to connect in that way. So I think it's really um, limiting um, the amount of time that you have that connection technology-wise and connection human-to-human-wise. It does make me sad when I see people who are relying more on connecting through text rather than even connecting through voice. 
as a regular basis. I think there's a place and a time for text, but I think when you're talking about emotional experiences, having face-to-face -face or at least voice-to-voice -voice makes a big difference because that's the human connection. I don't feel text really does the same thing. I teach a class at the University of Southern California and uh, I teach game designers and sometimes um, other undergraduate and graduates um, in the school uh, about player experience and usability for games, etc. And um, I actually don't allow technology in my classroom. Even though these are burgeoning <laughs> game designers mostly, I don't allow technology except when we're looking at a game and we're studying a game. Um, I don't allow technology and I'll tell you why. Because I want them to listen, I want them to interact, I want to interact, and I know that it can be distracting when they have a lot of other technology going on. So, um, and I also do believe that something happens from the brain, the hand, to the pen or pencil um, onto a note page. I believe something very organic happens that doesn't necessarily happen when you're typing. If I've spent too much time on Facebook, for example, I feel like I've eaten a big bag of M&Ms. You know that feeling where you feel kind of sick to your stomach and you've eaten too much and like, oh my God, I've wasted all this, you know, food and time and energy on, you know, kind of, I don't want to say Facebook has garbage, but, but stuff that doesn't really nourish me. I'm not being nourished. And that's how I have end up, ended up feeling. And I, I really believe that's how other people are experiencing it. And I think that's really what the trend is, is that we're feeling unnourished and we need to be nourished in other ways. We need to be nourished by having a face-to-face -face conversation. We need to be nourished by sitting down to dinner together and just having a conversation that is, doesn't have an intent just to let it, uh, let it flow. We need to have the ability to go be in the ocean or be at the beach and, um, and whatever that brings to us. We need that. And if we're stuck to technology uh, for all the time, which people who are in technology spend a lot of time in technology, we want to put it away when we're done. We're done with our work. We're done with the things we need to do with it. We want to put it away so we can enjoy the rest of life, what other, what other parts of life has to offer. I don't think any of us believe that life should be lived in technology. We believe it's a tool. It's really funny because I see there's almost a trend now to go back to retro as a, as a reaction to technology. Um, I think I see a lot of people using Facebook less, talking about using it less, actually using it less. Um, I think people have gotten to a saturation point some people, and maybe more of the community will follow in that way, but I've definitely seen more of a trend to go back to kind of the old school way of doing things. Old school being new school now. Um, and going back to just, you know, back to the basics. Um, I have several groups of friends when we meet for dinner that we pile our cell phones in a stack so no one will be distracted by their cell phone during uh, our time to spend together and I think that's wonderful. Part of enjoying life is playing games. We've been playing games um, in, in primitive times. We just now have technology to allow us to play kind of more deeper interesting types of games. Games are a part of our lives. So that's how children learn. That's how animals learn they're playing, when you see kittens playing, they're learning how to fish and how to you know, trap animals, you know, little mice. I mean, not that I advocate that, but, but that's nature. Um, and they're playing with little strings to learn how to do that. Uh, much in the same way that we're enjoying and playing games. I mean, cards, card games, mahjong, that goes way back. <laughs> um, and now we just have technology to allow us to play games in that way. But I really just the overall concept is to get rid of the hassles and make them more efficient so that we have more time to do the things that are enjoyable and create that sense of rapture in life that I think we all seek and all desire. It's a higher level of being.